Good afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to the Minor Basilica and Parish of Our Lady of the Rosary at Manawag. Let us begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. John of Cologne and Companions Martyrs. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, as Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Loving God, your holy martyrs, John and his companions, have shown us a wondrous example of faith and fortitude. By their witness and example, may we stand fast against the assault of the world and persevere in confessing the true faith. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel set out with all that what is what his. When he arrived at Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father, Isaac. Their God, speaking to Israel in a vision by night, called, Jacob, Jacob. He answered, Here I am. Then he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you a great nation. Not only will I go down to Egypt with you, I will also bring you back here after Joseph has closed your eyes. So Jacob departed from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel put their father and their wives and children on the wagons that Pharaoh had sent for his transport. They took with them their livestock and the possessions they had acquired in the land of Canaan. Thus Jacob and all his descendants migrated to Egypt, his sons and his grandsons, his daughters and his granddaughters, all his descendants he took with him to Egypt. Israel had sent Judah ahead to Joseph so that he might meet him in Goshen on his arrival in the region. And Israel said to Joseph, At last I can die. Now that I have seen for myself that Joseph is still alive. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you might, may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's request. The salvation of the just 
comes from the Lord. The Lord watches over the lives of the wholehearted. Their inheritance lasts forever. They are not put to shame in an evil time. In days of famine, they have plenty. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Turn from evil and do good, that you may, may abide forever. For the Lord loves what is right and forsakes not his faithful ones. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of distress. And the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in Him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Please stand. When the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you to all truth and remind you of all I told you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves, so be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. But beware of men, for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues, and you will be led before governors and kings for my sake, as a witness before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say, for it will not be you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but whoever endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. Amen, I say to you, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. My dear sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Araw-araw po tayong gumagawa ng desisyon sa buhay. Kapag gagamagawa po tayo ng desisyon, tayo po'y laging dapat na mamili. Kapag ka ang desisyon na gagawin mo ay pamimili sa isang bagay na mabuti at yung isa naman ay masama, hindi po mahirap gawin yan. Kasi alam natin ang pipiliin natin ay yung bagay na mabuti. Kapag ka ang pipiliin mo naman ay dalawang bagay na perehong masama, anong gagawin mo? Paano ka mamimili? Karaniwan ang gagawin po natin ay ang pipiliin natin ay tinatawag natin na lesser evil. Parehong masama, pero kailangan mong mamili. Siyempre, yung uh, lesser evil, hindi ka anong masama ang ating pipiliin at hindi natin pipiliin yung napakasama. Pero kapag ka dumating po sa buhay natin na ang ating pipiliin ay parehong mabuti, doon tayo nagkakaroon ng problema kasi ang pinamimilian mo ay parehong mabuti. Marahil ganito ang nangyari kay Jacob sa ating Ibanghelyo na tinatawag din o sa ating unang pagbasa na tinatawag din si Israel. Alam natin na pagkatapos niya makapag-wrestling dun sa Anghel ng Panginoong Diyos, binago ang kanyang pangalan mula sa pagiging Jacob ay naging Israel. 
siya'y kailangang mamili. Yung kanyang anak na inaakala niyang patay na sapagkat tinapon ng kanyang mga kapatid, yung ibang niyang anak pinagbili sa Egypto, kala niya'y wala na. Pero nagkaroon ng famine, matinding tagutom sa kalang bayan, nabalitaan niya sa pamagitan ng kanyang mga ibang anak na pinadala niya sa Egypto na yung lupang pangako, the promised land, kung iiwanan naman niya yung lupang pangako, eh baka mawala sa kanya itong lupain na ito. Baka tirahan ng ibang tao, agawin ng ibang tribo. Anong mangyayari sa kanyang buhay? Kailangan niya mamili, iiwanan ba niya ang lupang pangako para makita ang kanyang anak bago siya mamatay? O mananatili siya doon sa pang, lupang ipinangako sa kanya ng Panginoong Diyos. Yun ang kanyang pagpipilian, mahirap, pareho maganda. Pero sa kaso niya, mukhang nagkaroon po kaagad ng solusyon sapagkat ang Panginoong Diyos ay nagsalita sa kanya kung anong kanyang gagawin. Sabi ng Panginoong Diyos, pumunta ka doon sa Egypto, iwanan mo ang lupang pangako, kailangan mong makita ang iyong anak, papatnubayan kita, at mula sa iyo, lalago pa ang iyong lahi no, sa lahat ng bansa. Kaya siya'y lumisan, nakita niyang kanyang anak, at ang sabi niya, nakita ko ng aking gusto, maaari na akong mamatay. Sa ating ibanghelyo naman, parang dilema rin, a choice between two goods, ang pinagagawa ng ating Panginoong Kristo sa mga alagad. Isinusugo sila sa iba't ibang mga bansa, Pero ang sabi ng ating Panginoong Yesus, napakamatapat niya, kapag ka sinugo kayo, kayo'y pag-uusigin. Kayo'y mamamatay. Hindi lamang ang pamahala na mag-uusig sa inyo. Uusigin din marahil kayo ng simbahan noong panahon na yun. Uusigin din kayo maging ng inyong anak, ng inyong pamilya. Kayo'y ikaw na sa kalagayan ng mga alagad, anong gagawin mo? Susundin mo ba ang utos ng Panginoong Diyos na ikaw ay humayo, ipangaral ang mabuting balita, pero ikaw naman ay maaring mamatay, ikaw naman ay maaring pag-usigin. Maaring itanong po natin, bakit ba sila uusigin ng pamahalaan? Eh kasi nung panahon na yun, halimbawa, merong bagong aral na binigay ang ating Panginoong Isokristo sa mga alagad. Sakop ng Isra ang Israel nung panahon na yun ng Roman Empire, At nung panahon na yun, ang pamahalaan ay naniniwala sa sistema ng slavery. Marami halimbawang mga alipin. Hindi natin tahas ang makikita sa sulat ng simbahan ay itinakwil kaagad ang slavery. Yun po isang development ng kultura, ng kaisipan, later na lamang. Pero makikita natin na mga sinaunang kristyano, iba ang trato sa mga alipin. Tinatrato nilang kapantay nila. Binibigyan ng pagkakataon na magkaroon ng mataas na posisyon sa kanilang komunidad. Kaya nagiging threat sila sa pamahalaan. At kung ikaw ay isang threat sa pamahalaan, nabay makakaranas ka ng pag-uusig. Kahit po sa makabagong panahon, hindi ba? Ang mga taong sumusunod sa kanilang pananampalataya, ay eh, nagkakaroon din ng pag-uusig. Sa social media, makikita natin ang iba't ibang simbahan na sinisira, iba't ibang mga kristyano na sinasaktan dahil sa kalang pananampalataya. Ganon din naman, bakit sila magiging threat doon sa simbahan? Sapagkat, nung panahon na yon, alam natin na yung mga pariseyo, mga iskriba, yung matatanda ng bayan, meron na silang sets of beliefs na Ayaw na nilang mabago kung meron kang bagong turo. At tulad sinasabi ng ating Panginoon, kung gusto mo maging dakila, dapat ikaw maglingkod. Ikaw ang sa huli. Yung nasa hulihan, itataas. Yung nasa taas, ibababa. May mahirap kung pakinggan yon. Talaga naman uusigin ka nasa otoridad. Silang nasa itaas, ibabagsak. Tapos yung mahihirap siyang itataas. Bagong aral yan. Uusigin ka. Bakit naman magagalit yung mga anak? At yung doon sa mga magulang, anong dahilan? Bakit magkakagalit? Eh kasi po sinasabi na yung mga bata nung panahon na yon, 
ay mas madaling makinig sa bagong aral kaysa sa mga matatanda. Kasi matatanda, nakaset na rin yung kalang pananampalataya. Pero merong bagong aral na dala ang mga alagad ng ating Panginoong Iso Kristo. At yung mga bata ay maaring maniwala. At dahil dito sa pamilya, magkakaroon ng pagkakawatak, magkakaroon ng paglalaban. Kaya nga magkakaroon ng pag-uusig. Pinamimili ang mga alagad. Susunod ba ako sa utos ng ating Panginoon? O ililigtas ko ang aking sariling buhay sa pag-uusig? May pangako ang ating Panginoong Kristo. Bagamat dadaan ka sa pag-uusig, ang sabi niya, huwag kang mag-alala, papadala ko sa iyo ang banal na Espiritu. At hanggang sa makabagong panahon, ganun po rin po ang ating karanasan. Kapag ka meron tayo mga desisyon na gagawin sa buhay, maaring napakahirap. Hingin natin ang tulong ng banal na Espiritu sapagkat ang ating Panginoong Kristo ay nangangako na siya'y mapapasa atin hanggang sa wakas ng panahon sa pumagitan ng kanyang Holy Spirit na ating mararamdaman tuwing tayo ay mananalangin ng taimtim, tuwing tayo magbubukas ng ating puso't isipan sa ating Panginoon. Ano pong mga may hirap na desisyon ang dapat mong gawin sa buhay na ito? Tapos po tayong kumatok sa Panginoong Diyos, tumawag po tayo sa Kanya, Hilingin natin na ang kanyang Espiritu ay bigyan tayo ng lakas ng loob upang harapin anumang desisyon ang dapat natin gawin sa buhay na ito, lalo na po kung ito'y nauukol sa ating pananampalataya. Please hold Assured of God's guidance and protection, Let us approach God knowing that He is always ready with the help that never fails. Let our response be, Father, send us your Spirit. Father, send us your Spirit. The church leaders may be determined and fearless in proclaiming God's message despite opposition. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, send us your Spirit. That nations and peoples may be freed from sinful systems of oppression and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, send us your spirit. That those who have died may reap the rewards of their labors in God's eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, send us your spirit. In silence, let us pray for our personal intentions. Father, you are the source of life. Dispel the darkness of evil from our hearts and fill us with the brightness of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Father, receive the gifts we bring in memory of these holy martyrs. Keep us strong in our faith that we may stand firm in the confession of your name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is true, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts of prey by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Socrates our Bishop, Fidelis his assistant Bishop in all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph her husband, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, we have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words of Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Oh, 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace the grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace. Lamb, Lamb of, God. of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Son of Mary, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Lord, the death of your martyrs reflects the mystery of your son's cross. Through this Eucharist, may we be faithful witnesses to the power of the cross. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pagbisita sa Minor Basilica and Parish of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag at sa inyong pagkikisa sa ating banal na visa. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Most Ascended, go in peace. Thanks be to God. We shall have the prayer for the blessing of the sick and for the blessing of your rosaries and other religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us the strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health. Through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawa, may these rosaries, images, candles, oil, and other religious articles be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, yeah. 